Christina C. And I'm Haley Lupinski. Hope you're all doing well and thank you for watching. This week we've got headlines on our foreign exchange students, fall sports roundup, fine arts bulletin, and best for last, the good news segment. But before that, we have a brief update from our school board representatives. Our two student school board representatives report to the school board on a regular basis to inform them about what's been going on with our school. Hi, I'm Sammy Deary. And I'm Madison Fairchild, and we're both seniors, and we are the student representatives to the school board. So what we do with the school board is we get in contact with the MS MASD staff, and so we talk to the administrators and the teachers, and they tell us what's going on, student achievements, activities, all sorts of stuff. So we compile that all into a report, and we share it with the school board at the monthly meetings. Um, and so we attend the meetings. Yeah, and so the meetings are pretty formal. Um, they go along an agenda, there's attendance taken and stuff like that. And they can usually go from like an hour to maybe three or four hours, depending on how long the agenda is and how intense the conversation gets. Um, sometimes it's pretty interesting to listen in on that. Uh, they do things like approve new textbooks, budgets, um, and the new global certificate. So we got our positions as student reps um, by an interview after we filled out an application and it was all pretty informal and I would recommend that if you are interested in participating in the school board that you would try to apply. And we think that it's really important that there are students on the school board because the rest of the school board is made up of adults and they don't know what it's like to be actually in the school every day. And so when we talk about things like dress code and the master plan and the renovations, it's really nice to get a student's input on all of that. And it's super interesting as the student rep to be able to see how the school board works. I mean, I've never had any experience with like any type of government stuff and so it's really fascinating. And I really enjoy being able to give input and let everybody know what's going on. If you have anything that you'd like to share with the school board, please let us know. You can just come up to us and say hello, or you could totally just email us. Um, and the agenda or minute meetings are always posted outside of the school board, or outside of the district office, not office, this, the main uh, office. And so feel free to go and check them out and see us if you have any questions. Thank you, Madison and Samantha, for that overview. The freshmen have done a great job so far adjusting to the new school, but the change is only a fraction of what our foreign exchange students have gone through. These seven teenagers have turned their world upside down, exchanging their traditions for a new adventure they will never forget. From the difference in language, pastime, hobbies, school life, and government, these students will definitely have some memories to share with their countries when they return to their home countries. Okay, can you guys tell us one big difference about your school back home compared to McGuanago High School here? Lunch. How is lunch different? Well, you guys here pay for your lunch if you want more. No, our lunch is unlimited, so we can like have lunch wherever we want. Or if you like done with one tray, you can have more. But actually, the thing that really surprised us that we don't get more. It's just one tray and that's it. So that was the difference for us. Yeah. In Germany, we're usually going home for lunch and coming back to school then. Mm. Yeah, in Norway, we usually just bring our own lunch or yeah, buy a, like a sandwich. So, yeah. Any other differences that you see between your school and our school? Uh, for me, it's not about lunch, but it's more the size of the school. Yeah. Uh, in Belgium, my school is like 700 students and here 1,700. So the size when I came here was like, oh wow, kind of, like, kind of big. But yeah, that's it. In Spain, we don't have lunch because we eat at 3 o'clock, like your dinner is our lunch. And so that's different. Yeah. Uh, in Thailand, lunch is almost the same in Thailand, but the different situation is like the classroom, but we don't walk to classroom, but the student will stay in the classroom and the teacher will be the one who came into classroom and teach. Okay. Is there anything you really like about McGuanago High School better than your old school? Yeah, I like the sports uh, sport clubs. Yeah, they're uh, better than in Norway. There is, yeah, I like the clubs too because in my school we don't have clubs. When like sports we don't do in school, we do like outside school and clubs, like popular clubs. Not and you you pay money for sports outside, and here you just do it and like. It's not that it costs a lot of money here, so it is like fun for me and doing a lot of clubs, so that's fun. Yeah. Anybody, anything else? Yeah, the 
in Norway we have like one group of uh, students that goes to that go to mostly the same uh, classes together, but there you just uh, go to a lot of different classes with uh, random people. Yeah. Is there anything you dislike about school here compared to your school at home? It's too big. It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get lost. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Anything else? No. People are really nice. Oh, also, good. I, I don't know if it's typical from Macquarie, but yeah, yeah, people are nice. Yeah. Okay, can you tell us one silly or goofy thing that an American student has asked you about your home country or about your school or anything like that? I do. Camels. Just for American <laughs> kids that, you know, love camels. And I don't ride camels to school. No, we don't have license for them. We don't. <laughs> You know, how we could take a drive for license for a camel. It's, there's no test for that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay, I can ride camels like in desert, this kind of stuff, but not to school, so it's not cool for me. So, so yeah, forget about that camels. <laughs> no. um, some of my football team asked me if we have television in Germany. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What <laughs> you know? It, it's cringeworthy. It's embarrassing. What, it is. <laughs> what else? Somebody asked. What? Um, anybody else? Yeah, the a couple of people have asked if uh, they if uh, we speak English in Norway. Yeah. So they're talking to you in English, and then they ask you if you speak <laughs> English. Yeah, uh, they're like, uh, yeah, what, uh, what language do you speak in Norway? Uh, it's like English or? Uh, uh, no, no, it's Norwegian. <laughs> Yeah, a girl asked me about if in Spain we have phones. <laughs> phones? Yeah, and I saw her my phone and she was okay. <laughs> now I know it. <laughs> uh, there was absolutely nothing about Belgium, just uh, people didn't know where it was. But I don't blame them because it's so small. Yeah. It mm. makes sense. Erin? So, yeah. You got like silly question because like, you know, last year we had like two exchange students from Thailand. so. I don't have any question, but my friend have got a lot of question like, do I ride elephant to school? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> and of course we don't. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I wish I were brave enough to live in another country for a year. Absolutely, that would be a phenomenal experience. But back to something a little more local. So far, our cross-country, tennis, football, volleyball, soccer, and golf teams have practiced and competed hard. Let's see what the coaches have to say about their season so far. How does golf look for this year? Well, I, I think we have a pretty good, pretty good team. I think, uh, you know, as a, as a squad that's qualified for the state tournament three out of the last four years, I think we come back with some expectations. Um, to be fairly strong. Now in our conference, we play in a very traditionally strong conference. Arrowhead seems to contend for the state title every year. They're, they're always the team to beat in our conference. Um, over the years, CMH has had some really strong statewide teams. Um, Kettle Moraine is always a strong program. So it's a, it's a situation where uh, every time we play in conference, um, we have to bring our A game. The way golf works is um, we play um, eight mini meets where we play nine holes and the entire conference um, competes in that tournament. So when we play a conference meet, it's against everybody. It's not just against one team or it's not a triangular with two other teams. It's, it's all the teams. And in girls golf, we actually have nine teams in the classic eight. What we thought, Kate Martin has been outstanding. Kate's a senior works extremely hard at her game, is very talented. The last four event, events, she's been the medalist. Last night she shot even par, beat the next closest person by four strokes. So she's really playing, really playing at a high level. We've got just a couple weeks left and then our conference tournament and regionals. So we're at that point where we need to be playing well and I, and I think we're getting there. What should MHS look forward to this year's women's cross country team this year? Um, you can look forward to very big numbers and a very big presence out there. We have one of the biggest teams that we've had. 
um, since I've been here. And some really big studs on it, especially in our younger kids, um, are really stepping it up. So I think it'll be pretty exciting. Uh, a really exciting thing is that we are hosting sectionals here this year on our course, um, which is just past the third student parking lot. So we'll be hosting those sectionals um, the third weekend in October, the 24th, and we hope to have a lot of people out there to cheer on the boys and girls teams who will both be competing that morning. Thank you, Mrs. Patnod. Good luck to you and your team. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What exciting events are in store for men's cross country this year? Well, I think we have a really young team. Um, well, for, first off, it's the biggest team we've ever had in the last probably 20 years. Um, we have about 43 to 44 guys out for our team right now. It's really young. Um, I see a lot of exciting meets coming up. Um, actually, probably the biggest event is our, uh, our home meet coming up right the homecoming week on uh, Thursday of the, uh, the first. Uh, first off, we have the biggest team we've ever had in the last 20 years. We have about 44 guys out for the team. Um, probably our biggest single event we have coming up is homecoming week. We have our home meet. Uh, everybody should come out and make sure they watch on that Thursday. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sherbarth. Good luck to you and your team. Keep up the hard work, guys, and remember that you have Mwanago supporting you. Each week, the MHS News Broadcast will have a fine arts bulletin showcasing some of the fine art talent in the school. Whether it is band, orchestra, choir, art, or the drama department, each offers something special. Here's an overview of some upcoming events for the year. Hi, Mr. Weimer. Hi. What exciting things are going on with orchestra for this new school year? Uh, this new school year, we are playing for the Wounded Warriors Walk Run um, on September 27th. Uh, we're going to be playing the Star Spangled Banner. And looking forward, we're performing at Marquette University on November 5th. Anything else that's coming up? Um, let's see. Uh, well, our winter concert is going to be December 14th. Um, that's going to be a great concert filled with many wonderful pieces. That sounds great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma Angeli, and I'm the band director here at MHS. We've got a lot of opportunities for students to be involved in band. In the fall, we've got marching band, and you'll be able to catch us perform Friday nights at football games. Check us out at the homecoming game coming up this week. Uh, in addition, we've got a couple of classes that happen during the day. Wind Ensemble and Symphonic Band are concert bands. We perform your regular band music. We also have a jazz ensemble. If you can't make any of those classes, you can join one of our jazz ensembles that happens outside of the school day. And you can also uh, join Blue 2 Indoor Percussion. It's like drumline, uh, but it happens on a basketball court, and we usually perform after basketball games and do some touring kind of around southeastern Wisconsin. You don't have to know how to drum to be in that group, you just have to come to our informational meeting in October. For information about our concerts, our performances, or anything that we're doing, uh, feel free to just look around school. We try to put posters up. But in addition, you can also check out our website, our Facebook page, or stop down to the band room and say hi. The choir department is off to a great start this year. We're working long term on our concert, which will be October 27th. But we also have a lot of current things going on. This Thursday, we're hosting a party for all students that are in band, orchestra, and choir. And that's from 4 to 6 o'clock. Then also, we're planning for a field trip November 10th to see Wicked in downtown Milwaukee. Some of the choirs we have here at the high school. For curricular choirs, we have treble choir, which meets period one. And that's a group of wonderful young ladies that works on literature. That's for treble choirs. And third period, we have concert choir. That's our most advanced SATB choir. And they're excited that later in this year, they're going to be performing with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. So that's the, gonna be the highlight, really, of their year. But right now, they're working on other great music. Fifth period, we have mixed chorus, which has grade, students in grades nine through 12. And it's just a good mix of more advanced singers and some beginner singers. And we're excited that we have a student from Germany in that choir, Conrad. Seventh period is show choir. We dance and sing every day, so they are kids that love to both sing and dance. And then after school on Fridays, we have men's choir, and any man in the school is welcome to join. That's a fun group of young guys who just love to sing and 
sometimes love to goof off a lot, but they are a great bunch of kids. And then our select women's singers, cantable singers, we just had auditions for, and they meet Fridays before school. And later in the year, we're looking forward to the musical, and you'll be able to find out more information about Mary Poppins later in the year. So I hope you'll consider some of our music offerings and joining us. Thank you. So the classes that we offer in the drama department are acting and advanced acting and stagecraft. Um, in acting, you learn about the basic parts of how to perform on stage for an audience, and acting is uh, specializing those skills. Stagecraft is more of the backstage work, so there's like the building, the sets, the costumes, the props, the hair, makeup, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm also the advisor for Drama Club, and in order to get involved for that, um, all you really need to do is to show up to the Drama Club meetings or check the Drama Board. There's usually some kind of announcement about um, when we're meeting, what's going to be talked about at those meetings, if you have questions, anything like that. Some of the upcoming events that we have for Drama Club include the auditions and performance of Sarah Plain and Tall, which is our fall performance. Um, other things that you can get involved with are um, there are community events specifically around Halloween that are looking for acting volunteers and then there's also the Village Players Community Theater in which you can get involved as well. Thank you. Between sports and the arts, there's a lot going on here. Indeed, it is also shows how though we may each have specific interests, everyone is talented at something. Remember, instead of muck books this year, blue and gold awards are being handed out to those who demonstrate the McGuanago win. Don't forget to turn in any awards earned into the box in the main office with your grade level on it and a chance to earn cool prizes. Homecoming may seem far away, but it will be right around the corner soon. Besides the actual game against Waukesha North and Dance on the 2nd and 3rd, don't forget to look out for information about the Bonfire, Car Smash, and Powder Puff game. McGuanago Phantom Fest is only days away. Join the Phantom Legion Marching Band in a battle with several other marching bands from Illinois and Wisconsin. They will play songs in a lively competition to see which band is the best. I'm Christina C. And I'm Haley Lipinski. Thanks for joining us this week, and we'll see you next time for the MHS Weekly Broadcast.